Good night. And always remember, that's... Hard to breathe, but that's all right. Hush. Tristan with Nerdette's Newsstand, and I actually wasn't originally going to talk about this. I seen it this morning, but I didn't look into it because there's always rumors flying around, and I didn't know what was gone. Well, uh, just a little bit ago, I got a comment from Shelby, who's awesome, by the way, and I wanted to look into it, so I did, and then, of course, I wanted to talk about it. So what I'm talking about here is Joker 2. Now, I actually didn't review the first movie because I wasn't, I don't know what I was thinking. I didn't go see it initially because I it just, I didn't want to go to the movies. And when I did watch it, I was blown away. I was blown away at so many different levels of this movie. It wasn't the Joker I knew. And a lot of times that's not a good thing. But this was a really really good thing. Like, this is something that Warner Brothers, Warner Media, DC Comics, all of them, <laughs> kind of all the same thing, should be cashing in on. And they are with Joker 2. Now, one could argue, do you need a Joker 2? Because the first one was a one and done. The end was left pretty ambiguous enough to let your own mind make up the things, you know, that you wanted to, that's, I kind of love those ending, right? Like with Killing Joke. It's still hotly debated whether or not, you know, Batman at the end of Killing Joke actually killed Joker. And um, just just don't listen to Alan Moore. He's a grumpy old man and he's going to yell at you. So, huh, make up your own mind. And that's what I liked about this. It was very ambiguous at the end. We saw him go crazy, but did he escape Arkham? Did he get caught? What? How, you see what I'm saying? Like, it was an amazing origin story. I did not like Thomas Wayne, but that's okay. He was he was a dick. We got to see a little bit of the ties to Batman, and it was just enough of that flavoring that made Joker perfect. And I mean perfect. There's not a lot of movies out there that are that good on so many levels. On Even talking, you know, about the um, uh, mental health issues that it covers. Uh, it's amazing. I really, really like that movie. Now that I'm done chilling about the first, let's talk about the second. Because the second is coming or is being written. And it is having the same, obviously, Joaquin Phoenix. I, I heard that they were going to pay him $50 million. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Like, it's more money than I'll ever see in my entire lifetime. And, um, wow. So, there's a good reason for it, though. If you remember, there was a hot debate around it, but it made a billion dollars. It continually did well. It just didn't do well the first weekend. It continually did well. It had people back in the seats. It had people in love with this movie, and rightfully so. So should they do a second one? Should it be a one shot? I don't know. I still can't really decide but I'm okay. Like, I'm that person like, eh, we don't really need a second one, but I'm going to go see it. <laughs> I'm definitely going to go see it. Now, as far as the second one goes, let's take a look at the article and then we'll theorize a little bit. I don't think there's much here. And um, it just says that the sequel to Joker starring Joaquin Phoenix is finally in the works with the co-written by um, director Todd Phillips, who also co-wrote the first film. This is awesome. I real I, I think the, the more I think about it, the more excited I am for it. Because same team, same results. It, I, I think it will do very well. Um, Joaquin Phoenix is such a weird dude. And he fits this so so well. So they talk about the inspiration from Martin Scorsese Taxi Driver, and um, there's no official comment from Warner Brothers. Okay. So basically, it's in the works. We have our transformation into this psychopath, and now we need to see where it leads. Now, there's a lot of questions here, because Joker's story is highly, highly tied to Batman, Tied to Robin, 
tied to Harley Quinn. And I'm curious to see if they're going to bring those elements in. Now, I'm not quite sure they could bring Batman in. And we do know that the movie with Robert Pattinson is on a separate world, apparently. They're saying it's its own thing, right? So if we have no Batman, I I personally think, and I know some of you may not like this, Joaquin Phoenix is a little bit of an older man, right? Why not introduce Harley Quinn? <laughs> you had to know I was going to go there. You had to. Um... And I wish I could remember her name. Um, I'll put it on the screen. She's awesome. She plays um, in, no, uh, Earl. <laughs> I can't think of what it was called. Um, I, I don't even know. I'll put it on the screen. Oh, my God. I should be more prepared. I'm sorry. Um, but I really, she's Joy in Earl, and I can't think. Okay. This, this, this is silly. I'm going to keep going. I think her age matches her if you've ever seen her in that show, she matches that personality type we need. I think she would be a good fit. Now, she may be a little old. You could bring in Harley and not actually have that transformation into Harley. You can make this a trilogy just by introducing Harley a name drop. You get a name drop. Give us a name drop. And I'm not talking Margot Robbie, Harley Quinn, because that Harley Quinn had Suicide Squad, and then Birds of Prey left the Joker. Different world, but, you know. So um, I, there's a lot of ways you could do this. You could get him completely psychotic, do something like even we're seeing right now in A-Day with, with his um, toxin. But I think they need to bring in, um, for a second installment, I definitely think they need to bring in something like Johnny Frost, Somebody like Brian Azzarello and Libra Mayhew to maybe help um, and, and really go into those jo Joker origins and have him be that crime lord maybe at some point, right? And and definitely name drop Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn. Just saying, a good, good Harley Quinn. Now, what I was saying in the beginning is this is silly at this point for a capitalization from Warner Media not to do it. Do you realize, like, they could have their own dark multiverse with all of the villains, right? So we've got Joker, and now we've got Joker 2 coming. They need to do something, and I've talked about this before. Mr. Freeze would be great, but Scarecrow would be great. But if you're trying to get away from Batman's specific rogues galleries, a character that would be amazing to see is something like Lex Luthor. And the reason I say that is because there's, if you've ever read the um, Brian Azzarello and Libra Mayhew, I'm going to use them for everything. They're what? They're a dream team. Come on, let's be real. The Lex book by them. Um, it's fantastic. I, I just reread it not that long ago and I was blown away again. There is room for a villain multiverse. And there is people that love that kind of thing. And we saw what happened with the Joker. There's so many different villains you could use. And I'm not even talking, like you could do Poison Ivy and tie it, you could tie it into global warming. She's an eco-terrorist, Swamp Thing. They tried that with the show. Um, I, I, I've not heard anything but good about it, but I still haven't watched it because I'm like, what's the point? It's over, right? Like, we're not getting a second season, so I don't want to get attached to those characters. And, um, you know, I, I, I wish they would. I wish they would go further into this villain multiverse. I think it is something that could hugely benefit DC and Warner Brothers. It could make a lot of money. People love a good villain. And then you have, like I said earlier, Mr. Freeze. You've got that empathetic villain. Like, uh, <laughs> I've got a soft spot for Nora and Mr. Freeze. They're so cute. I love them. But then I, 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 I understand it. And then I hate it. And then I'm like, oh, no. Oh, <laughs> anyways. Um, but it, this is such a good idea. It really is. If you can't get to where Marvel is, because you're so far behind, like 10 years behind, try with the villains. Give it a shot. Take a shot. Nothing <laughs> no, nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? I think it could really work. And I think there's about oh, 25 villains. What about Victor Zaz? Oh, I love Victor Zaz. He's such a crazy character and so sadistic and gross and 
yeah, I, I, I may have a problem here. I like all, nah, 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 nah. not going to talk about it. Anyways, let me know, of course, what you guys think. Let me know your honest opinion on this Joker thing. I really want to know because, like I said, it's a great one and done. It's a great one and done, but I'm still going to be first in line because I love the way it was done and I love the performance and I love the undertones and I love seeing everything put together so craftly. Is that a word? So well-crafted. There we go. Anyways, let me know. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.